a very good morning to all of you. Uh, a warm welcome to all our students, parents, and my dear colleagues. Um, just to begin with, may I request our um, esteemed director, SMI, Dr. Arindam Das, Associate Director, Ramesh, uh, Dharma Kannan, Executive uh, Administrator, and Dean Students, uh, Rustam Vanya, one of our undergraduate dean, and uh, Ms. Padmini Nagaraj, Academic Dean Postgraduate, to please be seated on the stage, please. We start today by paying our respects to late Dr. T.M.A. Pai as we celebrate the 125th birth anniversary this year. So to begin with, can I just request our esteemed uh, guests on the stage to please proceed for the lamp lighting. May I also request uh, one or two students who are here amongst us to please come and join us on the stage for uh, the lamp lighting. It would be really good to have our new students with us. Any, anyone? Come, volunteer, please. Yes, good. Anyone else? Please come. You may remove your shoes. Thank you all. You may now take the seats in the auditorium. Yes. <laughs> okay. So let me introduce myself. So I am Dr. Pooja Jain, Associate Dean for PG Academics, and I'll be the Master of Ceremony for today's program. And uh, let's, without wasting any time, let's just start with what we are here for. So I would now request Dr. Arindam Das, Director SMI, to come up and share his words with us. Sure, sir.
you need a Good morning. Can you hear me? Like I said, welcome once again. We have an exciting academic year ahead of us. I am Dr. Arindam Das, like, as you can see from the slide. And as I always say, there is no H in my name. I'm not Bapu Dham, I'm not Ram Dham. I'm just Arindam. All right, so we'll start. Uh, at Srishti Manipur, we have pedagogy. In terms of how we teach, we have cycle, we have in menu. To know as you progress in your courses, can't hear. Yeah, should I use this? Okay, better. Hello. Yeah, this is better. Okay, so uh, I'll take you to. I'll share some of the thoughts in terms of uh, how life is at SMI at Tristy. Nothing better than the first thing experience, just to give you a glimpse. All right, so uh, there we go. Uh, we believe that design for us is an attitude. It's a journey. It's a quest. It is definitely multisensorial, and it's definitely not sequential. And as you progress through your course, you will understand what I'm talking about as you move through. Uh, this is our vision. We are a community of practitioners. As you can see, we work collectively. And we generate and sustain creative impact amongst, across domains. And what we feel is for better tomorrow for everybody. Uh, these are some of our PG courses. We have 24 of them. We have mostly in the areas of MDES, MA, MFA, and MPLAN. Uh, we have a total of 56 courses. These are the postgraduate courses. And uh, we also have a number of UG courses. We have at the BVOC, the BDES, and the BFA levels. Okay, you will interact with your UG counterparts once they start here uh, later in the afternoon. We also have other courses which we call uh, in PG diploma courses in terms of the integrated PhD and the PhD. You can see a list of those. They're anyway up on the website just to familiarize you in a kind of a bird's eye view what we offer in terms of our courses. Okay, now that you've got in, we can share some secrets with you. How is life at SMI? I'll give you just a few glimpses and you can discover the rest for yourself. Some of them may be what you see as visuals, some of them will definitely not be what you see in the visuals. So I'll just let you run through these. That actually happens. Many times you'll be on your knees and getting your hands dirty, so we have protection for you also, like that. All right, now I'll share another secret with you. Now that you're in, people say getting out of SMI is as tough as getting in. So here are some secrets. You are at that stage of your life now. You can say, yes, I did it. I really made it to SMI. So what next? And when you study here, your pedagogy will involve a hybrid kind of learning. You'll have a mix of online and offline learning which will be great in many ways because it's a good mix, as you'll find out. But then you'll have to do a lot of juggling in terms of your multitasks, both academic and non-academic. And while you move through your journey towards your goal, here are some tips because there will be situations which will be daunting, right? No jokes. There will be other kind of situ situations which will be even more daunting. And while you're going through your course, you will have assignments and faculty chasing you like this. But never ever lose belief in yourself. Think of yourself as the king or the queen. Okay? Because it is very, very important that you keep your faculty member or teacher happy, like so. Even better if you can delight him or her, like so, so. But whatever you do, make sure you don't end up doing this. Because if you do this, this is what is going to happen to you. And don't say I didn't warn you. 
But here's a secret. In addition to all your academic learning, what will be important for you to keep everyone smiling, you're including yourself, are your soft skills. Right? So these are, we keep talking about it, but very difficult to practice like time management because there will always, always be lots of stuff to do, but very little time left as it happens with all of us. But whatever you do, don't do this. It's not a good idea, right? <clears throat> Okay, this is not advisable. We have friends, we have counselors, we have mentors, just meet us. And also don't do this. Sometimes you feel like you're, we are all geniuses, so we tend to do everything by ourselves. We end up doing that. So it's very important to be a team player and to work together because at least I believe that in what's coming up next, everyone achieves when we work as a team. And the other thing is that you have to be very, very patient. Right? You have to wait Okay, this is the instant generation, but we have to be very patient if you want to shine out or if you want to really sharpen yourself. But sometimes what happens when it is too sharp, it's also an indication that you have not been really working or writing. Okay, so that's fine, but I don't mean to scare you, but we have a lot of fun on the other side. We have a lot of uh, fun activities, we have extracurricular activities, and you'll be part of it very soon. We have a lot of student activities. Uh, this is an, a visual rep representation of some of the events we have, you know. Uh, you can have your own interpretations from the visual. We have a lot of extracurricular activities. Again, I'll leave you with some glimpses of how life at SMI is besides academics, you know. To start with, we have, for example, music. Okay? And we're in the process of forming our own band. <clears throat> Just let you walk through that. Ever heard of this? John? Anybody heard of John? It's all around us. It's 99.9% .9 around us. All the carbon and the hydrogen and the oxygen and nitrogen in the atmosphere. All around us, we wouldn't survive without these. And they constitute, scientists say, 99.9% .9 of the atmosphere around us. So our John, which again will be say 99.9% .9 because given that nobody is perfect, so, based on that, let's see what our chon could be. Okay, coming up. I think that's the one on the top is the most important in terms of being confident. Okay, we all work hard. We have to have objective within what we do, why we do, we do and how we do. As design practitioners, we have to bring in novelty. But I think the most important thing is confidence in whatever we do and whatever we want to be. Along with confidence, we also have the issues of the other part of the chon, which is concentration on what we do with, with 100%. There's nothing called 101%. The very phrase person means it's per 100. So if anybody says 101%, don't believe. And we must be clear about outcomes and just network because you will, as you move through, you'll have different pathways. And net, when you network, do so without an agenda. And when you move through, at many times we'll have to change our paths because there are obstacles or situations we had not foreseen that which will come up always. And we know that we are all prisoners of these. So be careful because if we stay prisoners, it may determine that at the end of your two years that you end up like this as a bright scholar or you end up like the partner who's coming up right now. So one's got to decide that does one be somebody with no light of one's own or does one want to be a star? And not only a star, but also somebody who has light of, of his or her own and who can also throw light on others like that and be cool about it, right? And because remember that uh, we talk about leadership, but leadership doesn't require a title. 
On the converse, just because you have a title of leader doesn't make you one. So we remember that. The other thing which I'd like to point out as an institute, as a, as a university, as an institution, we are very, very strict about, uh, we got stuck there? Yeah. We are very, very strict about any kind of intoxicants, smoking, dragging, on campus, off campus, in case, in fact, on 12th of August, we'll be celebrating and we'll be holding anti-dragging day in which you'll be a key constituent and or contributor to that. So even though life may have its ups and downs, as long as you're strong, you're courageous, and you persevere, and research has found that perseverance is the most important factor in success, you'll always be a winner. Welcome to Mahe, welcome to SMI. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Das. I now call upon Rustam on stage and to introduce him, well, we call him the repository of stories. And uh, he's also one of the deans for undergraduate programs. So, Rustam. Stage is all yours. Thank you so much, Pooja. Good morning, everyone. While uh, the tech part is being set up, let me just uh, <clears throat> recount an anecdote at Shrishti. It sort of encapsulates uh, both the vision, mission, and what we hope and are trying to do with aspiring young creative professionals. Good. Thank you so much. Okay. So uh, we had uh, invited a head of uh, research and development of Philips. Uh, he had come to give a talk at. Uh, he had come to give a talk at Shristi, and uh, while we were interacting with him. Uh, so this is, uh, and he's based in Tokyo, he's based in Japan, and he heads the research and development team of Philips company. So first thing we sort of, when we asked him what's his background and what uh, sort of did he do in terms of studies and work and qualification, etc., can you guess? Head of R&D Philips in Tokyo. His PhD was in history. It was on Industrial Revolution history. He had come to Shrishti because he was looking for artists. So they are offering a one-year paid residency in Tokyo to creative, exciting artists. They are going to give the artist a one year time to work with uh, new technologies which they are developing, which was at that time uh, they were looking at fiber optics and wearable textiles. And the job of the artist was to play with it and do projects uh, where they, he or she would allow people to interact with the technology. So, and then finally that, that person, uh, and why Tokyo? So this question was also, we were wondering, why are you based in Tokyo? And that's because Tokyo is at that time, and probably even now, less so now, but more at that time, is uh, sort of the trend capital of the world of what young people do uh, in terms of fashion and accessorization, etc. So this was an interesting coming together of technology, business, industry, art, uh, and uh, 
and, and artists uh, uh, doing their work. So what Trishti is, what we are trying to do is to create a platform of platforms where uh, students who are learning here uh, have an opportunity to enrich their learning by having diverse ecosystems around them and hope and, we, and, and a lot of them may not see eye to eye, uh, may have different belief systems, may have different disciplines within which they work. Uh, but the idea is that this generates a much more richer learning environment. So just to uh, outline what I'm trying to share with you, that it's a creative impact-making institution. Uh, we want graduates, we want alumni, we want people who uh, go out from this institution to do this creative impact making in society. And that could be done in multiple different ways in multiple different sectors. Uh, this list of uh, uh, overview of our work are the kinds of projects that students end up doing where they synthesize their vertical learnings which they did in particular disciplines or particular kind of uh, uh, skill building where there are certain sectors within which these projects are uh, housed. So, and, and as you can see, there's a, there's a wide variety of options for students to situate their work in. Now, the creative economy itself is now pretty huge in the sense that a lot of uh, economic growth and social change, technological change that is happening is happening thanks to creative industries. So the options of uh, where uh, you would land up in the near future are immense. What we are trying to do here is to try and discover for you what is your calling and what is your passion, what are, what are you good at, and then how do you synthesize all that learning and express yourself as a creative individual out there in the economy? I think one of the ones which is hidden is in interesting. It's, uh, oops, where did that go? How do I come back? Huh? Ramesh, I'll have to rem remember your password, which I can't remember. Just do it from here. Easier, no? Okay. So, uh, in this creative economy, which uh, we are both impacting and building, uh, there are certain trends which are uh, affecting it. And Indian economy, in that sense, is uh, interestingly placed, uh, where all these make in India digital transformations, many structural. Uh, sectoral reforms, emerging technologies, both an opportunity and a huge challenge, a global trade, and most interestingly, demographics. That with this huge youth bulge, uh, there is this opportunity to uh, impact. But for that, we need to create and develop uh, people who are confident in stepping into a world that is very dynamic, which is ever changing and evolving, but they are centered because they have a certain creative confidence that they have developed in themselves, regardless of what specialization or, or a particular discipline that they may have been while studying here. So this creative impact making happens through a very interdisciplinary experience. And that particularly so in uh, postgraduate uh, because in a way we believe that you come with certain strengths of your own and we try and uh, channelize that into your area of interest. We are quite antagonistic to uh, so placements for instance, there, there's this big uh, concern, and rightly so, about where am I going to place, what job am I going to get. But before you get a job and build a vocation or a career, 
uh, it's very important that you uh, center yourself as to who you are. Because then you will be able to go out there much more confidently uh, because skills are going to change, economic situation is going to change, technologies are going to change, but you will still remain and your self-confidence in doing what one would call a plug and play uh, would be always abiding. And here's the time for you to develop that. Now, from a institutional or a pedagogical point of view, we have to be equally creative. It's very interesting that uh, education, uh, educationists uh, play a very interesting role where they have to envision a world 10 years from now and prepare someone for it today. Not an easy task. And that's what uh, we are constantly struggling with and constantly working on to produce a kind of pedagogy that prepares you for a future that we don't know. So as we said, you will get an opportunity to uh, work with these values, uh, with different stakeholders. Uh, you will encounter political, environmental, economic, technological, social, uh, within your projects and within your units and, and, and learning that you experience here. And the idea is to give you a diversity of experience for you able to deal with these kinds of situations in a work environment or in a practice or in your own, uh, if, if you choose to become an independent uh, practitioner, how do you deal with multiple interdisciplinary scenarios? So the vision, as I've already stated, is how do we creating a better place and a better world for ourselves? And uh, through this kind of creative impact making via creative industries as creative professionals. Now, how do we democratize this? How do we, th there's nothing, it's not a rocket science. A lot of people think, ah, sort of a lot of creative stuff comes very intuitively and you are born with it. Of course, there are certain skills and abilities, but you can learn and acquire them. And if you are at a place where, which, like Shristi, which tries to amalgamate and uh, aggregate uh, a whole set of diverse resources, it's a wonderful place to start from. So this, uh, in the name itself, I think there are these three pegs to this tool. So you've got art, you've got design, and you've got technology. And that little Philip's story, which I told you, was sort of in a way had all three uh, in that. Where you begin from is not important. I think there's a lot of stress which some students have as uh, I, I, have, I have done this till now. Uh, I don't know enough. And uh, what should I do and what should I learn now at this stage in life? I think it doesn't matter where you start from. What matters is how do you synthesize and integrate this interdisciplinary mindset in order for you to be super confident about dealing with any situation. So we hope that uh, we do this creative application of art design technology in our own pedagogy, uh, which is open, inclusive, empowering. We try and... Uh, so in terms of this transformational future that we are trying to build, and hopefully a better tomorrow, uh, we need this creative impact making capabilities in every individual. And that's the aim of the uh, two years or four years or three years or undergrad or postgrad that happens at Shrishti. We hope you discover yourself. So we, if you look at this, if you look at this top, this, this list of clusters, uh, they are just to help you uh, situate and locate yourself. Do you belong to any of these clusters? A lot of the faculty uh, and courses and projects are clustered around these. Uh, and you could choose to fit into any one of them or choose not to fit into any and do your own thing. 
this list below, uh, these are labs and centers. And I think this is important for you to appreciate and understand. This remote does its own thing. So labs and centers are like satellites around the main hub of the academia uh, in the middle, which is your courses and programs and units which you do. Labs and centers are people, artists in residence, uh, people who are projects of their own, people with great experience who have brought in their own expertise and are doing their own project. You could have someone doing oral history, someone who could be looking at uh, uh, oral uh, Sufi traditions of India, someone could be making films on so environment, documentary filmmakers are there. Uh, you will have ecologists looking at Western heart ecology who are doing their own projects. You have the opportunity to in turn work, interface with them either formally in your academia or uh, in an informal sense. So uh, the idea is that this whole ecosystem exists for you to make use of and try and find your own calling within this diversity. So this is uh, uh, something that uh, we are perpetually battling with uh, our admin as to why do you need so much transport, why are you flying off here and why are you going in a bus there and why are you walking off there. Uh, part of the reason is that m a lot of the learning is outside the classroom in real uh, context. and. Uh, whether it's an ecological, social, urban, rural, uh, the idea is to get people to uh, go and literally dirty their hands. So this uh, is a rich practice and, and learning opportunities which are project-based, they're interactive, uh, you get people from outside coming in and, and uh, interacting with you. And uh, very importantly, there's a big voice and choice. You can make your own uh, unique Every student can make a unique uh, portfolio of work and learning experience. Uh, each one will be very different from the other. Now, I mean, we know that, uh, again, a point of stress or anxiety is, I know this, but this new creative field I don't know much about. Uh, and there's a certain de-schooling and re-schooling that needs to happen in your own heads and minds. And ho hopefully the pedagogy, the facilitators, and the experience that you have gets you to rewire yourself. Because uh, again, reminding you that it's more, you will be more abiding, your emotions, your inner resilience, uh, and your ability to tackle a dynamic sort of world in flux is what is going to be much more abiding than what you learned yesterday or today. So, so look upon it from a wider time horizon. Now, each one of you will have this unique path. Uh, you will have mentors, you will have facilitators, you will have people who will be advising you along the way. And so don't hesitate to express doubt or to express uh, any clarification uh, or to even say, I don't know, uh, what should I be doing? So finally, what matters is a body of work that you have created, what you learned from the past and what you are doing now. So that body of work is what, or what in professional terms is called a portfolio, is what you are aiming towards. That is who you are going to be. Uh, and that is going to speak for itself. Often in creative professionals, you are hired just by seeing the portfolio, even before meeting the individual. Of course, finally they do meet you as a person too. So this, 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 why, what is the privilege of being a student? The privilege of being a student is that you have this opportunity to uh, rewire and transform yourself within, and finally it will show in your work uh, on the outside. Okay, so that was a kind of brief uh, idea for all of you in terms of what your learning experience is, why are you here, what opportunities exist, uh, so do make use of this interdisciplinarity, this diversity that exists in this ecosystem and uh, welcome to SMI and hope you have a very exciting two years. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rustam, for that insightful presentation and talk. 
Uh, I would now call upon stage Padmini Nagaraj, Academic Dean for all PG programs. She'll give you an overview for the PG space at SMI. Not this. No, there's one more. That quote was there. Okay, then I'll use this itself. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Arindam, uh, for sharing uh, the overarching vision for Srishti um, and also uh, desirable uh, and not so desirable attitudes for uh, our students. Um, and thank you, Rustam, for. Uh, calling um, all our students of postgraduate levels. Um, I would like to say levels because uh, we have here uh, students uh, for postgraduate diploma programs, uh, the postgraduate studies, as well as the integrated doctoral studies, um, who all comprise the spectrum for the postgraduate levels. Uh, we call you to participate in the creative economy. On behalf of all our uh, deans and head of studies and faculty at Postgraduate Studies, I would like to welcome all of you to Postgraduate Studies at Srishti. I think um, these two quotes capture the essence of um, how we would like to look at the Postgraduate Studies and uh, the vision of Srishti itself, because we live in times, or for that matter, all human struggle has been in, is in times of change and uncertainty. And uh, perhaps, uh, as Albert Einstein said, no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. Or if we look at uh, Paulo Freire and Miles, Miles Horton, Horton uh, their conversations on education and change, we make the road by walking. Artists and designers thrive and perform in spaces of change and uncertainty. Towards this, all of us look at building competencies and creative leadership and inquiry. My task here is to bring to you the processes in Srishti for the postgraduate levels and some of the things that you will experience through the two years or one year or the five years of the integrated postgraduate, uh, integrated doctoral studies. The entire postgraduate studies across all levels is inquiry based to be more precise, creative inquiry based. And we run this through studios, workshops, seminars, and something which we call as interlude, which is in, spa in between these spaces and give us some kind of an interval to pause, reflect, and allow students to lead conferences and colloquium, inviting artists, designers, thinkers, thought leaders, and students from other universities to participate in something that is current and trending topics, to discuss, argue, and debate. 
We look at navigating programs to self-directed inquiries conducted in studios and in the field. We negotiate learning through a choice-based system. And we nurture inquiry through mentor-led programs towards building portfolio of interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary studies. We have standards and capabilities, and our practices include informed, creative, critical and reflective, and expansive. The habits and attitudes that we would like to develop are of curiosity, openness, persistence, to stretch and explore. The way we understand, maybe I should move this a little. The way we understand inquiry um, is through posing certain questions or emerging through certain certain questions through our experiences and defining certain problems or scenarios. It is in opposition to the way banking uh, facts or depositing facts happen traditionally or in conventional education systems. Inquirers usually identify and research issues and questions to develop their knowledge or solutions. Generally, these are used in small-scale investigations and projects as well as research. On the other hand, if you look at a creative process, it looks at imagining, speculating, it looks at posing provocative questions, it looks at iteratively refining, and there is a cyclic process in which you come back and reformulate the scenarios that you're operating in. However, if you have not gone through this, then you've really not experienced what it means to be a student in a creative inquiry process. We will have deadlines, we have deliverables, and we see you coming and asking for us to extend all the deadlines. Rest assured, we will, we will be compassionate, but it will be ruthless compassion. Characteristics of an inquiry or a creative inquiry-based learning. It provides remarkable self-direction and autonomy in learning. It allows for extensive field-based and authentic research and practice. It develops an understanding of professional practice and ethics from both an independent and industry-based perspective. Access to creative industries through projects, internships, and capstone within the framework of the curriculum. Opportunities to join industry, creative, studio, at a mid-career professional level, or practice as an independent artist or designer. Our graduate profile. Our graduating students can chart their careers not only in the software, hardware, or creative industries, but also in government, non-governmental organizations, rural and urban development, think tanks, as strategic design innovators and practitioners. We have seen some students become successful social entrepreneurs, shaping the emerging ecology of startup organizations in India through design-driven innovation. We also see some students redefining employability, Yes, redefining employability as public practitioners in art and design organizations, as community and cultural organizers, and as researchers on academic and public projects. The program sets up students for pursuing high quality postgraduate education in art and design research, leading to a career in academic or industrial R&D. This is how the implementation of the postgraduate levels of the program looks like. A typical semester over the first three semesters comprises of 15 weeks. We have coursework, which is studios, workshops, and seminars. The seminars allow theoretical reflections. And we navigate this through a choice-based credit system. 40% of the weightage is for your coursework. There is an ongoing building of portfolio that happens. And then we look at practice and research in the second half of each semester. This, again, carries about 40% weightage. 
And finally, the end of the semester is a summative assessment which carries 20%. The summative assessment, here is the secret. We can openly tell you your summative assessment, unlike other examinations, is a portfolio of practice. There are some googlies, there are some wild cards as we unfold the portfolio process itself, but this enables you over the three semesters to learn to curate your own portfolio, to place yourself and present yourself in the larger, wider real world. Our approach to assessment and evaluation is drawn upon the new education policy 2020. You notice that we have 20% weightage on summative assessment, whereas the remaining 80% is on continuous assessment. So there is no high stake examination. We look at curating a portfolio of practice as a graduating standard. Our graduating standards, the requirement to pass and for award of degree, all and not some of the criteria listed below. You need to have a cumulative attendance of 80% and above. You need to have acquired at least 80 credits over the two years of the program, whereas for a postgraduate um, diploma program, it is half of it, that is 40 credits, and the cumulative grade point average of 5.0. The ecosystem in which you will operate in terms of your research practice or your creative practice is aligning yourself with some of the research centers and labs that Srishti hosts. These center labs are Center for Reimagining Transition, Design Earth Lab, Just Futures CoLab, Frugal Design DESIS Lab, Plants and Decorative Practices Studio, Moving Image Lab, Leela, an artist research studio, TMA Pi Endowment Chair in Adaptive Ecologies and Climate Extremes, Decolonizing the Anthropocene. TMA Pi Endowment Chair in Anurans, Acoustics and Anthropogenic Climate Change Lab. And our open public creative impact platforms are Art Science Bangalore, Srishti Films, the UNESCO Chair in Culture, Habitat and Sustainable Development. All of these are open for students to apply to every semester to conduct their interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary research, aligning with the practitioners or the principal investigators within those creative platforms. Our student experience, we have a wellness team who are invested in students' psychological health, learning support, Creative, as we have creative art therapists, we have health professionals, and we also have a nurse for providing primary and preventive health care. We also have an exchange program, and we have currently four of our students heading off in their third semester to various universities uh, for the exchange program. And currently our partnership or collaboration with, is with Catch Design School France, University for Creative Arts UK, Linnaeus University Sweden, University of Applied Arts, Austria, Politecnico di Milano, Italy. We have several student-led clubs. You will soon hear their names, but we have cycling clubs, trekking clubs. We have a club for dance, and if I remember, it's called Scatter, and there is Mandali for theater, and many more clubs. These are student-led, so you are welcome to come join the community and create your clubs. We have a rich alumni network, and um, in the upcoming weeks, as you're with your program deans and head of studies, they are inviting the alumni to engage with you so that you can interact and seek their support. Our postgraduate studies, uh, the level programs, have the postgraduate diploma, the Master of Fine Arts, Master of Design, Master of Planning, Master of Arts, and the Integrated Doctoral Program, often called as Integrated PhD, which is in Reimagining Transition. We have the postgraduate programs, PG, which is the arts program, which is also including the PGDP or the Postgraduate Diploma Program, which is called the Finnish. 
Um, and the ones which are in blue are the ones which are offered as a diploma program. And uh, they're called Finnish because they make you eligible to take a lateral entry uh, into the second year of the MA program. The bridge program, and rightly said so, it allows you to bridge from the diverse fields that all of you come from. And um, you can either move into the MFA, the fine arts programs, or master of design, or master of planning programs. We also have two unique programs, the Master of Arts Professional Practices, which is a residency program for short duration of times during each semester, uh, design and education, entrepreneurship for impact, public pedagogy and art practices. These programs are offered for mature learners, working professionals who wish to continue education and are able to allocate and find time to come for an intensive study. We have the integrated doctoral program, which is reimagining tra transition, which is the current and trending uh, in the field of art and design, looking at uh, planet and planetary, um, uh, the way we look at climate crisis and looking at planetary health. Finally, before I close, I would just like to um, take the names of all our deans, program deans, as well as um, uh, the administrative team and the head of studies, um, who you may, once you're out of this space and we have snacks and tea organized for you, um, you may be able to interact with all our program deans and um, head of studies. Pooja Jain, Sudebi, Kush Patel, Vishwesh, uh, and our administrative team, Anuradha and Srivatsa. So if you could just stand up and wave out to them so that they see your faces and they could reach out to you, please. That's Kush, there is Srivatsa, Anuradha, and Vishwesh. Thank you. Um, our program deans, Sandeep. Sandeep, there he is. Uh, Swati Dandekar. Naganandini Das Gupta. If you could just turn around so that they can. Thank you. Um, Shrivi, I think she's not here. And uh, Kumkum Nardik. Thank you, Kumkum. And Mary Jacob. I'm sorry. Okay. Our head of studies, I'm going to call them out really fast. And if, if all of you could just stand and turn around and wave uh, to our parents and students so that they can reach out to you. Uh, Kurush, documentary film. Manoj, industrial arts and design practices. Keya, information arts and information design practices. Aparna Raman, Visual Communication, Shreyas, Public Space Design, Urban Design and Sustainability and Conservation, Heritage Design, Planning and Management, Debjani Roy, Human Centered Design, Kush, Technology and Change, Sanjukta Ghosh, Design Led Innovation, Vinita Rath, Experience Design, Vivek Garadi, Design Computation, Anil Kumar, Contemporary Art Practice, Shai Haradia, curatorial practice. Padbidi, myself, Astha, and Varun Gupta. Thank you, Dr. V. Raghavan. Uh, perhaps um, if, um, Pooja, if you could, yes. So uh, please uh, come onto the stage and address our students and parents. Thank you so much, Padmini. And uh, now we have with us Professor Dr. Madhu Veera Raghavan, who's also our Dynamic Pro VC, Mahe Bangalore campus. So I would now request him to share a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much, and a very good morning to all of you. I have a f more than a few words to speak. OK, so firstly, I, yeah. Great. Yeah, so it's great to see all of you. Um, it is, uh, it's just a pleasure to welcome everyone to Mahe. And uh, what I think is my favorite school, actually, and 
I've got nothing to do with Srishti, but I tell you this much that everyone thinks that I'm a Srishti faculty, the amount of hours I spend with these guys. But I'm enjoying it. And um, I'm, although I'm the PVC, I'm housed in a Srishti building, I have an office, and people think that, why don't you have an office on the sixth floor, which is where you're supposed to be, but you're perennially surrounded by Srishti folks. This is a good thing, actually. Anyway, that's fine. Can I first uh, congratulate um, all of you for, of course, making it to, to what I think is an amazing institution, and we're just delighted that SMI is part of the Mahe family, um, and therefore it's just uh, terrific news for all of you that you made it. So very big round of applause, perhaps. We can begin with that, which uh, you so richly deserve. Um, because it isn't an easy thing to make it to top schools in the country, and uh, to made it, you're damn good. Um, also, I want to congratulate SMI. Um, I don't know how many of you followed the news, but I sent out yesterday to a uh, long note to the uh, Bangalore users. Of course, you would not have access to it yet as students, but I just want to read a paragraph um, so you're aware of what SMI is doing in addition to all the amazing work that they've put out, you know, things that you cannot even imagine. Somebody goes to Himalayas and shoots snow leopards. Uh, I mean, a professor of finance like me would, wouldn't even know what it takes to do that. But I just enjoy the conversations with these people, so it's great. So firstly, proud to announce that um, SMI, uh, Mahe Bangalore Campus, will partner with the World Design Organization and the BBMP and the Association of Designers of India in hosting Bangalore's World Design Topless project. The project will address issues related to urban transformation, public health, mobility, and the revitalization of the region's water um, sheds and urban parks. It's a very large amount of funding the government of Karnataka has given to SMI for the next five years, and it is an absolutely brilliant, splendid news for all of us. So again, a uh, big round of applause and congratulations to uh, Geeta and the entire, Geeta is not here, uh, but Geeta and the entire SMI team, Jacob, and everyone else has worked very closely around them. Everyone else has worked very closely with the project, and uh, there was signing ceremony uh, a few evenings ago at, uh, I think we've done so, there were, uh, the deputy chief minister was also there. So. This is huge. I mean, this is, uh, you know, you're competing with the best in the business in the, the world, and you come out Trump. So I think that's just a great thing to do. So congratulations again to SMI. Uh, I had just a couple of things to say. I drafted something uh, which is perhaps not so um, relevant to you, but, but so what? And I'll just say something that I want to say. So I was thinking about how to welcome you to Mahe, and uh, I sort of, I have always been a great fan of breaking my talk into parts or into into sections, which I think looks good, and then I sort of try and connect the dots. So today what I thought was I'll do it two ways. I will uh, break it into two parts, one dealing with, uh, mm, with the world history, a little bit about world history, and one dealing with your personal history. Um, uh, some things I'm going to say is not directly relevant to you because you are a, a master's student, but uh, still, you know, it may be useful because I don't know how many of you have done any undergrad programs in Mahe? Perhaps nobody has. How many of you studied in Manipal before? So there is just a little about two hands, maybe three, maybe four, less than half a dozen. So that's about it. So the rest of you have no connection to Mahe before. That's fine. That's actually good because we don't want to have a lot of diversity. So firstly, a very warm welcome. Uh, you're beginning your second university life. The first one of yours is already over because you've done your undergraduate program elsewhere. So this is your second stint, second shot at the university because you're now doing a master's program, which is great. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about culture. Uh, you know, I want to talk about institutional culture, and I want to talk about linking that to your culture. So large universities, great universities such as Mahe, do these orientation events. And what is the purpose? Why do we do this? Why do we bring parents together, students together, faculty together? Because there is an institutional culture that we have, right? And you come from different families, different state, different regions, different languages, and you perhaps don't know what Mahe's culture is. And I think the alignment of our culture to your culture is essential, because that's when we can teach well, you can learn well, and perhaps we can find a rightful place for you in tomorrow's world. And therefore, the marriage or coming together of two cultures are very, very essential. And perhaps when you spend one and a half, two years uh, your, your master's degrees, you'll find that you're also understanding what culture we stand for. And I thought to do this, uh, the culture business, 
I wanted to go back a little bit in time, and I, I, I actually don't think I'm the right person to do this because you guys are experts in arts and all kinds of stuff. But I wanted to draw a little parallel from the French Revolution. And I like the French Revolution for a number of reasons. And one such reason is the enduring principles of democracy that they so well propagated. And there were three very important words uh, they spoke about in the French Revolution, which is liberty, equality, and fraternity. And I was thinking when I'm speaking to you today, how do I bring those three words and connect with what I can do for Mahe Bangalore with you? So how do we do with liberty? What do we do with uh, equality? And what do we do with fraternity? So I thought, OK, let's look at Mahe. Uh, we also have some very interesting and enduring principles in place, like the French Revolution did. And so liberty is very important to us, which means that you'll have a phenomenal amount of freedom. Not that you, will, you don't already have it, because you've done your undergraduate degree, so perhaps when you left your school, uh, now, I don't think many of us would have had great freedom while we were at school, uh, the way our society actually functions. And perhaps parents micromanaged your life. To a large extent, my parents micromanaged my life. Um, and I'm glad I'm not doing it to my kids. Um, so I told them, you live your life the way you want to do it. Just tell me what you're doing. That's pretty much all I want to know. Um, so therefore, uh, when I say liberty, liberty means that you should have all of the freedom. There is nobody here who's going to come and tell you what you should do, particularly not for you, because you're a master's student. If you're an undergrad student, perhaps Arundhaman T may say a few things to you about how to balance your daily life. But because you're a postgrad student, it's none of our business uh, to tell you what you should do. Because you are the master of your life, you take pride in your own learning, and you should take ownership of your own learning. You know what you want in your career. We are simply here to facilitate you. We are not here to teach you. Teaching has done enough damage in schools with us, so I don't want to do any more damage to your lives. Okay, so whatever damage we had to do, the Indian education system has done it until we are in year 12. We have lost creativity, we lost learned how to innovate, we don't know how to write, uh, we do many number of things that we shouldn't be doing, we seem to have no freedom with our lives also. So those things are all done. Now we want to get back to university, therefore I want you to be able to enjoy and have this absolute freedom to choose what you want to do, study how you want to study and make the career you so want to make. So that is on the liberty. On equality, everyone is equal. I am the last person on the planet to, to do preferential treatment for anyone. We will not do it, and I don't stand by it, which means everyone is equal. There is no gender-specific treatment that's going to be given to you. There is going to be no special treatment given to some student and not to others. So Mahe believes very clearly in meritocracy. Of course, there will be exceptions, and those things have to be done. But largely, we are a, we are a, we are a university that believes in absolute equality. But that does not mean that all of you will get equal grades or the same grades. You have to work hard. Somebody will be an A plus, uh, somebody will be straight four GPA, somebody will be straight eight, somebody will be two, but that is your choice. Again, that goes back to the liberty part of it, so you know how to use it, and therefore we are not going to say everyone is equal around them, everyone should get an A plus. No, everyone's not a winner here, so we won't do that. The third part I want to talk about is fraternity, which is, which is something that's important to me as well. Because so I do think that, uh, you know, you should, take, you should take great sense of pride that you studied in Mahe, you studied in SMI. I mean, when I speak to Gita uh, regularly, uh, Gita still is so passionate, and so are every SMI faculty, right? I mean, there is a sense of belonging. There's a sense of pride that we are SMI, we are Sishti, right? And there is no school like us. A sense of, you know, uh, absolutely we're a world-class institution, and that oozes out of every SMI faculty. So when you're studying in this program, you also should get that feeling that yeah, I've come to a top school, and therefore, I'm very proud. And as the PVC of the, of the campus, it is also my responsibility in ensuring that each of you get the very best of education that you should. So Arindam will ensure there are excellent faculty. SMI will ensure there are great resources. Everybody will ensure there is great infrastructure for you. I mean, if you look at the faculty profile, it's just mind-boggling. The, the PhDs they have done, the experiences they have. Uh, I mean, you are taught by the best in the world. Therefore, I'm very sure that there is no way they will compromise on the quality of materials or the education that they need to give. Therefore, fraternity is good to me. But in all of it, there is one thing that we haven't spoken about, and that is responsibility, uh, which perhaps is not directly so relevant to you because you are an adult and uh, you're in your 20s or whatever, maybe middle 20s to late 20s. So 
I'm sure you understand what responsibility is. But before I go to responsibility, I also want you to realize that this is a place where you're going to form a lot of relationships, a lot of networking, you know, a lot of learning is going to happen. And I want you to be able to utilize all that. Definitely, you're not going to be studying some 20 hours in the classes or in the library, but there's much more things to do than just classes. And I'm sure you'll learn both in the class and outside the class. So therefore, that is absolutely critical. Now, let me just go to responsibility. What I mean by responsibility. Um, you know, to do responsibility, I thought I would just go back to our personal history. And personal history means I would just go, I'm going back to French Republic. You know, the French are in the Fifth Republic, as we call it, since 1958. Uh, and I use those republics to, to connect to our personal history. So let's think about how we were. We also have a series of republics in our lives. The first is what we call the childhood republic, when we were little babies and we had no idea what we were doing and perhaps our parents or extended family was looking after us. Then our second republic was when we went to year 12, high secondary school. Again, I don't think we were very responsible. Um, parents did everything for us. Then the third republic is, you know, when you start to sort of, you know, you become an adult. Um, maybe some of us are uh, responsible then. Uh, and the fourth is when we start to earn our living, uh, contributing. That's the fourth republic. And, and you then become a little bit more responsible. And the fifth and the final republic, the French are in the fifth republic, and so are we at this point, is when we think about how we contribute to society. And that's where we have the maximum responsibility. So, uh, you know, as a business school professor, I tell my students, uh, guys, I don't mind if you do not appear in the press at all, but I certainly mind if you appear in the press for the wrong reasons on page one. So uh, that means responsibility is very, very critical. We need to know what we are doing. Uh, we are responsible citizens, uh, and we don't want to do anything that will uh, impact the name of the brand or yourselves in a very negative way. So therefore, we have to uh, exercise the element of responsibility. So on that, that's, that's, that's what I wanted to say. But if you can think of a sixth republic between now and whenever, do drop me a message. I will add that in my next orientation, if there is. Uh, Option to add the sixth one. French are still in the fifth, so we'll be in the fifth. So, uh, so the the responsibility progressively increases. Uh, then I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, why are you here? The objective of of you coming to uh, SMI, and that is very clear. You chose this program. You wanted this program. You've applied to this program, and you went through the process. You got it, which means you know what you want. So. Uh, well, the, while the university will give you an excellent amount of opportunities to be parts of clubs and committees and uh, do all kinds of things, there is a larger purpose why you came, and that is to also do very well academically. That's important. And I don't want to stand here and preach because you are uh, senior students, uh, but it is important for me to say this to you, that uh, you know, if, if, it, if at any point in time you find a lot of extracurriculars is sort of seeping in into your academic you know, grades, then I perhaps will just take one step back and think, mm, okay, maybe I need to just rebalance this a little bit more. Perhaps I'm overdoing something else and underdoing my accounts, which is what I came here for, so I'll balance it off. So that is something you need to be mindful of. So, but that does not mean uh, that you will just study all the time. I also want you to explore the campus. This is a beautiful 116-acre campus, and I have some very good uh, friends and colleagues who are actually working with me in, in ensuring uh, Deepta Satish is here, Guraj is here, there are several other people in this room who are working with me very closely in ensuring that we have the most amazing biodiversity, sustainable, uh, you know, coexisting campus with reptiles and amphibians and whatever else and butterflies and whatnot. So, uh, you know, Guraj talks about uh, let's uh, bring lots of frogs here, let's have audio moths, let's do surveillance of all kinds of birds that are around and uh, we will have QR codes for those and uh, we have a campus walk, uh, uh, seven years here, is here? Yeah, he is, there he is. So we're thinking about sacred uh, plants, uh, how do we uh, How do we actually have a very important plants where we can pluck, you would not do that, I'm very sure you will never do this, students will never do this, because your idea of uh, fluids, probably liquor, not mine, so, we are thinking about making some sort of, you know, a very nice uh, afternoon uh, drink, which is made up of, you know, leaves from uh, the sacred plants and stuff like that, tulsi, mint, whatever it happens to be. So, you know, this is going to be a very different campus, the sort of campus you will never experience. Maybe in IAC, where uh, people like Guraj come from, maybe there they have all of this stuff, right? But our vision for Mahi Bangalore is equally world class, that we will be able to have all of this. So, over the next six months to one year, you'll see a very different 
The construction is happening, which is important. The concrete stuff is happening, that's important. Uh, you know, you will need to have a student court which seats around 1,400 people. There is a whole uh, seating area of 5,000 where it can go and jam and play music, a Coldplay or a Katy Perry or a Taylor Swift or Pitbull or, uh, you know, whatever else. I love all those stuff, so whatever else you want to play, uh, you know, One Direction. Um, so you can do whatever you want. So that's around 5,000 seater. I don't know if you've taken the time to go through the campus or do that. And while you're doing this, take 15 minutes each day just to ask yourself when you get up, what new will I learn today? What is one new thing I can learn today? And there hasn't been a day for me, at least in the last 90 days, where I haven't learned something new. It could be a very simple 90-second Instagram reel that somebody would send me on some stuff, which I can't discuss. Good stuff. Nothing, nothing bad. Uh, but, you know, I would learn something from it. So I would spend maybe, you know, even a minute, two minutes. But there would be something new that I would have learned. And I'm very sure before the end of the day today, I'll learn something new. Right? So ask yourself. And then look at yourself and see, can I have a better version of myself before I leave this? Wonderful institution. What, what is it I need to do? So that is something I would like you to think about. And the final point is, please don't waste your time, nor ours. Time is very important. So we need to be able to utilize that time. And for a finance professor who teaches time value of money, you know, it's only important that I speak about time a little bit. And the final point is, uh, you know what MAHE stands for, right? What does it stand for? What's the expanded version of uh, MAHE? Do you know? Manipal? Excellent. So like you have one, I also have one for my hand. May all be happy everywhere. Huh? So may all of you be happy wherever you are and whatever you do. But certainly uh, I think it's important that uh, we spend the next two, two years or whatever duration spending in this glorious institution making the best use and having superb careers. And perhaps you'll have some Oscar-winning uh, people in this room, who knows, they'll win an Emmy Award, an Oscar Award, the Golden Globe, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, it wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me one bit, actually, if something like that happened. And I will give you one final example. There is a school of uh, uh, you know, philosophy, humanities in, in Manipal, uh, headed by my friend uh, Nikhil Govind. And, uh, you know, I've invariably experienced that undergrad students who pass out from that school end up going to Harvard, Oxford, Berkeley, Tufts, Dartmouth, sort of schools they go to. You know, and, and you couldn't do that if the program was not good. You couldn't do it if the faculty weren't good. You couldn't do something like that if the curricula was not good, right? So you, you graduate out of Manipal, and you end up doing your master's in some of the NCR or wherever else you go, right? Sorbonne, wherever else you go. So that's the power, that's the legacy, that's the faculty, that's the creativity, and that's the experience these ladies and gentlemen bring to the class. And therefore, you are an absolutely uh, safe hands, but do experience and do explore and do experiment uh, and really have a good time. Thank you very much, and uh, many congratulations to all of you. And of course, to my favorite uh, SMI team, which just does every single day they bring out something new. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Thank you so much, Dr. Madhuri Raghavan. And as we come to the end, I'm sure all our aspiring practitioners here know why they are here, what's waiting for them to be explored. And when they leave this auditorium, of course, the power-packed words of uh, Dr. Madhu is something they will, it will be retained in their brains. And they will come on Monday thinking what new they have to learn each day. So um, now I would like you all to please join us for snacks and tea. And just to repeat it once again, for the students, we have already shared the orientation plan for the week ahead. Uh, in case if you have any questions related to that, and also uh, any questions related to logistics or other things, we have the help desk set up outside the auditorium. Please go ahead and um, your questions will be answered. Our uh, program deans, head of studies will be around so you can um, meet with them and talk. And um, thank you so much for being a part of this orientation program for the academic year 23-24. And I wish you a great day ahead. Thank you so much. <laughs>